component to a successful deployment of virtual agents. So our goal is to really educate you on how to set that up, some recommended practices and considerations, and some tips and tricks for model tuning. And then toward the end, we'll take a few moments and discuss Q&A. So consumer life and work life are really coalescing these days and chatbots are an utmost important feature to help bridge the gap between how to balance both of those needs. So for any folks who have gone out there and gone on shopping websites or Amazon or consumer application, you'll notice the presence of chatbots. This has been pretty prevalent in the consumer life, but at work, our conversational experiences have been more in-person interactions, lengthy emails. And so our goal today is to educate you on how the natural language understanding with virtual agent is really bringing this to a next level consumer experience. So Mike, did you wanna go ahead? Sure, so what I'd like to do now is show you a quick demonstration on what this looks like in the, in the uh, mobile device. So here you could see my uh, mobile device um, on the screen and I'm going to uh, play the, the role of Roger Seed and I'm in transit right now. And I just realized that I got a new phone number for my emergency contact and I wanna update my emergency contact in the system. So I'm gonna do that by way of the virtual agent engaging NOU. And we just wanted to show you from the, the now mobile perspective on how easy this could be for you. So as Roger, I'm logged into my mobile device and I'm going to engage the virtual agent. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to change my emergency contact phone number. And then I'm gonna provide a number of what I want it to change to. So I wanna update my emergency contact phone number to this new 1-800 number, and I'm gonna go ahead and click send. So now we're engaging the NLU where it's grabbing parameters from my uh, from my entry to understand what I want to do. And it understands that Kyla is my emergency contact and do I want to update her information? And so I say yes. And as we could see, the virtual agent just updated my emergency contact phone number um, that quick. So I didn't have to go through a decision tree. It was able to grab those parameters and update accordingly. And then, you know, gives me some more insight. Is there any other information I want to update? So I say no. And then I carry on with my day. So we wanted to give you a quick snapshot before we get into talking about some of these concepts of VA NLU to show you how it works from a uh, employee perspective. And then we'll, sh we'll, we'll kind of open up the hood and show you the, those moving parts of the engine. So Mike, that was a really cool demonstration. What part of that was natural language understanding and what part of that was just virtual agent? No, that's a great question. So the, the part of the NLU was the, the phone, the number, and the actual digits that I typed in, and of course, emergency contact, so it knows what my intent is. So the that's the part of NLU is what we grab those entities or those those items that we want to 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 be able to grab from what I've typed in, and it engages the virtual agent conversation, you know, to provide those uh, those mechanisms to hold those uh, those variables that I specified, being the uh, the phone number. Wow, what a great experience compared to my past experience of updating my updated contact info. And it gets into the conversation of what really makes a good conversation and what are some components that we can talk about as part of that. And really a lot of customers and people have a tough time understanding, well, what parts are the NLU and what parts are the virtual agent? So being able to have what we call chat clients to support that conversational interface. And as part of that, you're gonna hear terms like intent and entity. So this really gets into the ability to create an intent for anything a user might ask. And for each intent, there can be different types of examples for the various ways a user might communicate that 
through the chatbot. The dialogue portion is really the result of our machine learning model. And this matches what the user says to one tent to another. And you may have a, a few intents, you may have thousands, uh, but the dialogue is really the brains behind the scenes that produces a realistic structured conversation that makes the chatbot into a more human-like experience. Hi, Marcel. Well, um, I just have a quick question. Many customers do not understand the difference as to how NOU enhances the virtual agent. You know, in the virtual agent, I could use decision tree um, type functionality. How does NOU differ from this, uh, this functionality of decision tree type? Yeah, Mike, that's a great question. So NLU really gets into introducing some different components to make that possible. Um, on the next slide, we can take a look at some of the different components that ServiceNow delivers around that. But really, you know, to introduce the power of natural language understanding, you want to make sure that you're prompting the user to put in key pieces of information. So Previously, with a keyword type of framework, you would type in, I need to update my contact information, and it would be more of a way of conditional logic and keywords to navigate you through that process. The natural language understanding is pretty critical to this because what it does is it, it not only introduces a human experience, but it also introduces a way where you can engage further with that machine learning engine to produce a conversation that gives you a much better experience. It's more enriched, it's more accurate, it can estimate what you are going to ask, and it can prompt you for information to get a resolution quickly, rather than reaching out to somebody who's a live agent or just getting frustrated and starting to search on knowledge or other, other mediums to get the answer that you're looking for. Oh, that's awesome. So to get into some of the benefits of natural language understanding. Um, so on the next slide, we're gonna talk about how this really is available today um, for customers to make that conversation better. So the conversational experience that you're familiar with can also include things like a live agent. It can include uh, the virtual agent client interface, but it also introduces that entity of, uh, or that component of natural language understanding that can be accessed through many different ways. So as you saw, Mike was able to pull this up on his mobile device. He could be in line at the grocery store and engaging with the chatbot directly from there or in a preferred way of a natural workspace like a Slack or Facebook Messenger is a great way to interact with the, the virtual agent with natural language understanding. Hey, we got a quick question on our YouTube channel. They want to know, um, do, you, do you have to train the... NLU engine with learned utterances? That's a great question. And we'll get there in a few minutes. Um, okay. Yeah, I would say hold that thought. That's a fantastic question. Um, and something we definitely want to get into in some more detail, because we do have some recommended practices around what that could look like. Um, but some of the benefits around this new virtual agent are going to be more like, you know, making the employee experience a next level experience and something that meets people's expectations where they are today. So previously this could have been um, a conversation with you know, a live agent or it could have been something where you, know, you had a bad experience with a chatbot in the past and, and you're hesitant to use this. So natural language understanding really introduces that confidence to help build the employee's trust with being able to use the chatbot to resolve common issues and understand that the chatbot knows what they're asking, how they're asking it. It can, can, can interpret how they're using the language that they wanna use, their preferred language or their preferred jargon. And ultimately the business benefits because the better experience the employees have, the less inquiries and cases that come in to shared services. So when we get into what is an NLU model, this is really the precursor to introducing some information around what are uh, some common terms that you'll hear with natural language understanding. So prior to getting into how to train or, or make the model sharper, we want to first introduce some basic components of what are included in natural language understanding. So 
Intents are really something that you're going to hear most often. And as a whole, natural language understanding really takes language and represents it in a mathematical way. Um, but to do that, it needs inputs in the form of intents and utterances. So the recommended approach is to create an intent for anything somebody might ask. And for each intent, it's going to be an example of the various ways somebody may ask or communicate something specific to IT or to HR or something around the organization. So as part of this, examples could be um, like the example you saw Mike use, right? Updating emergency contact info or updating password or a pay discrepancy issue. When we get into things like entities, this is where a user wants to express um, specific components of an intent. So these are more around specific examples, like a date, a time, a duration, a type of machine, um, a company location, a meeting room. So it's really provides more detail that allows the model to interact and provide a dialogue that is specific responsiveness to how the user is, um, Inter interfacing using these intents and entities. So really the NLU model under the scenes will detect what type of intent, match it to an entity and produce a structured conversation that is something the employee is expecting and something that is helpful for the employee. Thanks, Marcel. What I'd like to talk about now is a little bit about the architecture. So we have of uh, an important component of the NLU model. And that's what we call the, the predictor shared server. Um, you know, an important thing to mention here before I get into the details is that it is required for that prediction server to be in the same data center as your ServiceNow instance. And this is how we keep it in the same data center. It's not leaving ServiceNow. So that's why we show them as, as separate components as I go through the model. So we start off with the NLU model builder and I'll go through a demonstration of this later in the in the presentation of you know starting to construct that model so of that NLU model builder we then um, can see that it, it has the uh, the models in the BU scoped applications for HR we have other models that could be in 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 other scopes but those models are housed in in their their private scopes and when we build them in the model builder so Mike, so, I have a question. Is, sure, sure. So this is a really interesting diagram, you know, but I'd like to know what, what languages are supported here and how can I make sure at my organization I'm delivering a way where users can engage with virtual agent in their preferred language? No, that's a great question. So out of the box in New York, NLU is supporting English. Um, that does not mean that we can't facilitate other languages. It would just take to be able to engage IBM Watson as part of NLU for that real-time language translation. So supportability for New York is in English. Um, we can support other language by ways of the uh, IBM Watson integration into NLU, but it's a great question. So through that, when we build this, this NLU model, we then have our VA designer as which we've constructed our VA conversation which ultimately is presented by way of the virtual agent. Um, you see the, 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 the uh, arrows that are going back and forth into the NLU service to get those predictions that we get as a, as a result of our training of that prediction server. So when I build my model, I build my intents, I add my utterances and my entities, I go ahead and then train that model it's going to send that data to the prediction server. It's going to churn those algorithms. And then from that point on, I'm going to, to test in order to see what the prediction server has given me as a confidence score in order for um, what the uh, employee has typed in. So when they're requesting update of benefits, we could get a, a confidence score of what they typed in matches our intent of, of updating their benefits. So what I want to talk about here is a little bit about the NLU model overview. And this gets pretty uh, mathematical um, when we talk about somatic parsing. 
of what encompasses what we're doing with the NLU model, a bit of machine learning using word vectors, and then some grammar engineering using uh, linguistic rules. So NLU is not an AGI, so it's not artificial intelligence. It needs an understanding model. And that's where we're training that model by way of entering more utterances, seeing what the prediction server generates as a confidence score, and then tuning on from there, which we'll get into a little bit more later. Um, the shape and meaning to understand language. So again, this is part of our configuration of NLU as part of our utterances. You know, how can an employee specify what they're trying to get to or the intent? How, you know, how many different ways can they, um, can they uh, voice that or, or, or type those, uh, those requests in? Um, the language is shaped derived from a hybrid approach of deep learning and grammar engineering. And again, that, that learning that we're doing for the, uh, for the uh, prediction server. Um, word vectors are used for deriving meaning. It's easy to train your vocabulary. So we have a, 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 a default of vocabulary in which you could add that vocabulary, you can add synonyms, et cetera, to meet your business case. Um, we're using CRF classifier for named entities. Again, this structure is based on machine learning framework. And the NLU model builder is a tooling to create the NLU model. Again, that, that no, uh, no code uh, method in order to configure our, our uh, NLU model. So what I wanna get into here is some of the pre-built models for the 40 plus intents that we have across the platform for ITSM, HR, and CSM. So as you can see for ITSM, we're offering a, a number of intents of what the employee can ask for. You know, I wanna reset an RSA token, local admin access, things of that nature. For HR specifically, we've introduced um, some, well, well, we've introduced nine intents that follow along with the, uh, the corresponding uh, uh, topics that are in virtual agent. So for these, nine intents, you'll see the corresponding um, conversations within virtual agent. And of those, what we've added as far as conversations are updating the address, update email, update phone number, and the rest of these items that you see in bold. Yeah, Mike, these look great. So if I wanted to add a conversation, am I able to do that? Or am I stuck with the out of the box ones? No, absolutely. It's, it's, it's our intention to have customers create more conversations, create more intents in order to meet their business needs. So we certainly facilitate that again through that no code UI, um, you know, through the studio in order to configure those. And you know, later on in the presentation, I'll give a, a insight as to how that's done. And I'll walk through a demonstration. So what I want to talk about next here are some of the common intents, entities, and entity types that we're providing. So some of the common intents of, you know, what we're trying to get to are the greetings or the conversational endings, um, affirmative responses, um, connecting to live agents. So those are some of the common intents that you'll see um, out of the box of what we would want to do. Some of the common entities are date, time, duration, and location. You know, I want to take it, you know, PTO from, um, you know, December 9th to um, December 20th. So those are those type of entities being the dates. Um, we also have number patterns. So a case number um, we want is a common entity. We want to be able to parse out the HRC with the digits that follow. And then last but not least, um, we have the entity types. So we have simple list where it's a table choice field. We have a list where it's custom. I just have a custom or a static list of, of values. And then we have a pattern um, which we're using regex. So those are the four different types of, uh, of, of entities, uh, entity types that we can have. Okay, what I wanna get into now is, is the topic discovery. So we wanna launch the right conversation, um, you know, based on what the, what the employee entered. So after that employee enters their initial statement, we want the virtual agent to be able to extract those details to be able to launch the topic. And this is all based on that, pre or that prediction server and the conversation uh, um, that, that is, is, is based on the intent 
um, is what's going to be presented. So we allow the user to interact with the virtual agent in natural language during that conversation, as you could see here. So Mike, you're saying I could initiate a conversation with just one word, like profile. You can, um, and it really depends. Um, you know, it could be very general. So if we're using virtual agent across the platform and I just type in help, it's going to be pretty general across all of the applications. So if it was something specific like PTO, um, benefits, something that was specific where it could, you know, filter down to H. HR, if that's what our intent was, you could certainly type in one word, just realize that, um, you know, those results may be based on something more general, uh, depending on what that word was. So we also have slot filling where we want to skip answers. So an example is, is I may have an ent uh, a named entity where I'm specifying the email address in my example earlier. I was specifying my emergency contact, a phone number with some digits. So um, I can be, uh, I can configure, you know, that NOU and that conversation so that those slots are filled. So it will skip questions um, that were answered already. So another great feature, because obviously we don't want to be able to extract what the employee typed in and then ask them questions based on, um, you know, what we know they've already typed in. So, you know, in, in my example earlier, when I walked through on the mobile device, it would have been um, not a great experience for me to ask, oh, well, do you want to update the phone number? Um, what is that number when I've typed it in? You know, we were able to extract it um, and then, you know, skip details were needed. So the... Uh, uh, an important element of the virtual uh, agent is to be able to switch conversations. So at any stage of the conversation, the user um, can enter a statement to switch topics. So in my example here, um, I typed in, I would like to update my profile. So now the virtual agent engages for, um, you know, that topic, updating a profile to where, uh, well, no, I really didn't want to update my profile. I want to order a new phone. So I could switch conversations into you know, just typing in my, uh, you know, my text of, of, sorry, I want to order a new phone and have the virtual agent switch conversations there. Wow. So this is game changing. So you're saying I could switch topics from something that may be more on the HR side over to something that IT supports? Um, that's correct. Um, that, that's kind of the beauty of the virtual agent and the beauty of the um, unified portal that's, you know, we're, we're engaging the virtual agent on or the mobile, of course. That's fantastic. So there's a secondary topic uh, we call this small talk. So essentially when you're in the flow of a conversation, you can pop out and have a separate conversation without getting kicked out of that initial flow. So if I'm ordering a phone from IT or I'm requesting an, a profile update to an emergency contact through HR, I can realistically jump out and order a pizza as part of that conversation if that's something my organization supports and still be able to complete that topic flow of ordering my phone or updating my profile without losing any momentum as part of that flow. Hey, would I be able to ask something on small talk like, you know, how do I change the oil on a 1956 Thunderbird? <laughs> well, and that's, that's food for thought. If that's something that your organization wants to build out as a potential topic, I don't see why not. I think that'd be a great use. So some of the setup topics that are delivered are more around some of the filling areas such as greeting, surveys, um, closing topics, and so forth. So a lot of times organizations want to have a more personal greeting unique to that company. So instead of saying, hi, how can I help you? Maybe it's good morning, or maybe it's hello, how's your day? So it can really introduce a component of empathy um, as part of that personal greeting. And so other areas like the anything else topics, is there anything else I can help you with? Any other questions that maybe that may that the chatbot maybe of assistance and answering are often included here? And other available topics if you're not really finding what you're looking for. Hi Marcel, for the NLU VA top uh, setup topics plugin, um, topics such as 
is anything else topic or error handling topic and others do not have an NLU model associated and no intents to pull up even after the NLU model is republished, um, are we missing something or is this not working as expected? Yeah, Mike, so I hear your concern. So it's actually working as expected because the anything else topic and some of the other setup topics really show up automatically as part of the framework of the conversation. It's really not meant to be invoked as a standalone. And as a result of that, there is no intent um, to support these setup topics. No, thank you. Sure. And then as part of the secondary area of setup topics, um, areas like including feedback surveys, so a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the chat bot, how did you feel your experience was with it, live agent routing, and areas like error topics, fallback, or closing the conversation can often include creating a case or an incident to support uh, the user if they're not getting what they need or they want to close that conversation out. So those are just some additional examples of the setup topics. Uh, hi, Marcel. In your opinion, do you think having this conversational experience um, will drive more employees to use the virtual agent? I sure hope so. Since it's so humanized now with the natural language component, I can't wait to start using ours. Awesome. Before I get into the demo, um, Lisa, have there been any questions come across via the chat? Um, yes, I think we've, we've covered some of them. Um, so Charlie Edwards asked, uh, do you, so we talked about the training of the NLU engine and utterances, and they had this um, out of the box is localization supported for supported language plugins. Great question. Well, English is only supported this time. And with the NLU uh, specifically, it's by way of the IBM Watson integration. So the out of box language plugins really don't come into play. Um, as of today, as of the New York release, it's really English supported additional languages are by uh, virtue of IBM Watson um, integration with NLU. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just walk through um, what that looks like in creating this new model and, and getting started with, with VA NLU. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through how that's done and then kind of go through some training and testing to give you a good insight on how you could get started. So my first step is I'm coming through um, the, the studio and I wanna create a new application file. And that application file type is gonna be the natural language understanding. And I wanna create a new NLU model. Um, I'm gonna call my model name the HRBU um, NLU. AT is asked the expert, um, and then I give it a description. What I want to detail here is the confidence threshold. It's going to default to 60%. Um, typically, when I do demonstrations, I put that a little bit higher because this is the threshold of if something falls below 60, it's not going to be presented as a match for that intent. So if I just, you know, typed in help into the um, into the chat uh, um, session, it's probably going to return um, a lot that are low because I didn't have a lot to match on. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set this to 75% um, to get started because I want to be more precise. So in, in order to engage this model, I want it to return anything that was above 75%. So it, once I create my model, it's going to take me to my next step, which is then to create those intents. And it's our recommendation that if you're going to structure a new conversation, a new um, interaction, um, you know, to resolution for your employees, that you start with the NLU model and then build the VA conversation around that. And, you know, for, for obvious reasons where you're going to be providing variables and things of that nature, it's just we, we feel it's going to be simpler for you going that, uh, that, that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new intent. I'm going to say I want my intent to be update, um, update insurance benefits. And then I could give a description to my new, new intent. So now I have this new intent of update insurance benefits, 
and I want to add some utterances. How can I ask for updating of my insurance benefits? I need to update insurance can be one. Insurance update could be another utterance. And a key is, is when you're um, developing your intent. So you've listed out the intents or the ultimate conversations that you want to engage the employee in. Um, what are ways that you could um, ask for that intent? Um, I'm just showing you some examples here. We recommend that you have a, a minimum of 10 utterances per intent. We would like that you have much more, but as a bare minimum, we recommend uh, 10 at least. Um, and then it's an ongoing model tuning, which we'll get into a little bit more. Um, but for sake of time, I'm not gonna go create all 10, but I do want to show you um, how I can create a synonym for something that's different. So in this case, I'm just gonna misspell something. I'm just gonna misspell, I need to update my insurance. So even though my typing's bad, I didn't misspell it uh, without purpose. So you can see that it's not a recognized word in my model. So it's already underlined, so the word is unknown. So what I wanna show you here is if, this is kind of more of the troubleshooting, if I go to train, it's not going to be able to train it because it doesn't know what the word is. So if I click on the word, now I can create a synonym for that words. So, you know, for lack of a better example, um, I just, I'm going to type insurance incorrectly to say, well, if somebody, if somebody, uh, you know, spelled that word incorrectly, um, I still want to be able to accommodate for it. Um, so now if I go to train my model, I'm able to train my model and then I could test my model. So once I've done my training, I want to test to see what that percentage is if we just have an employee type in insurance. So you could see that I've, I've met 78% of confidence based on what the prediction server, um, you know, gave me as a result. So, you know, to, to Marcel's point earlier, can I just type in one word? And by all means, we could just type in insurance and, and based on the, the logic of the, uh, of the uh, result, I'm matched at 78%. So what I would do is add more utterances for different ways that our employees could specify the way to ask for update of insurance benefits. And then I'm gonna to continue to train and test my model to make sure that it's giving the right results that I want. In this case here, it may be that, well, 78% is way too high for me just typing in insurance. Um, we know that it's probably not going to engage IT, probably not, probably not CSM or the other applications. So here's where you get into those, um, you know, kind of tuning of, uh, of your model in order to, you know, give the, the best output for your employees. So um, my last element that I want to talk about is, is the ability to create an entity. So a good example may be, well, I want to, you know, specify different types of insurance that an employee could request. So I can make the insurance um, a, a different type of entity. So I'm going to create a simple entity and I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this insurance type. And I'm going to make this a, a list to where I could add, um, you know, different types. I could add dental, I could add medical. So you kind of get how I can create this, this entity. So now for where, where, you know, I've highlighted in my utterance, what's, you know, a corresponding, um, a corresponding entity. So the meaning being is those entities are those more refined results that I could apply um, within my prediction um, results. So it's going to account for what's typed in. It's going to look for that word insurance. And then it's going to, you know, look at that entity where I may have typed in, I want to update my dental insurance. So it's going to recognize that as well. Again, just more icing on the cake to 
to be able to refine, be able to direct the employee to exactly the intents that we're trying to get them, them to based on what they've typed in. So again, this would be another case to where I've added a new associated entity, I train my model, and then I go ahead and test my model again. So you could see it, it matched dental based on just the name entity at 29%, which is less than my 75. So if you wanted to direct the employee to update dental benefits, then you're going to add more utterances to make some refinement um, based on, you know, the confidence threshold that's returned from that prediction server. So I hope this gave a good insight on how that model's created. Pretty simple. You see, I didn't have to create any code. My next step would then be to create the, uh, the conversation to consume these, this data being these entities um, that I've entered in order to fulfill my request. So moving on, you know, back to NLU. So some of the setup configurations. So, you know, I showed an example of unknown words. So words that were not part of the vocabulary. And I showed how you could add a synonym. You know, in my example, I misspelled it. Most likely you're going to not want to, you know, account for misspellings unless it's something that's commonly misspelled and your employees aren't getting results based on that. It's a commonly misspelled word. So um, that could be an example. Another example is how things are referred to. So, um, you know, some cases are referred to as tickets. Some incidents are referred to as tickets. So if you want to make a synonym for tickets to an incident number, those type of things you could use synonyms for. Um, it's, it's not a valid uh, entity is, is some of the uh, uh, issues that you'll have when you're trying to train that model. And then some of those entity annotations or long phrases are not supported. So, you know, we have to keep those entities within reason um, rather than being a long phrase. Um, but uh, um, again, if, if it's reported, we're, you know, we're, we're welcome for feedback to understand um, where you're having issues with, with entities um, within your model. Um, you know, certainly something we want to work with you to help support your use case, you know, based on your, um, you know, NOU model components. Um, it, if you come across an issue where it's working in the NOU model builder, but not in the virtual assist or, or the virtual agent, you want to make sure that the model has been published. So I can train and test my model without it being published because obviously I want to be able to test it before I publish it. But if you forget to publish it, you're not going to be able to consume it with your conversation. So that would be one good indication that, well, your model's probably not published because um, it's working in, uh, in, in, in NOU, but it's not working on the, uh, in VA. Um, in the NOU model builder, you're only testing one model in VA. Um, you're testing against multiple models, so that result may vary. Um, with the prediction server, um, again, I'll stress that the, uh, the prediction server has to be in respective environment where your instance is provisioned. So if your instance is in um, you know, a certain data center, that's where your, your prediction server should be uh, pointing to as well. Um, and just a note that this is a system property, the prediction server, um, what that URL is to that prediction server. So um, if you, you know looking for a place to troubleshoot, um, there's a system property for that prediction server URL. Again, English is the only supported language. If multiple languages are the requirement, the recommendation is to use the supported IBM Watson integration for those real-time translations. Um, one thing to note is that today, um, Singapore and Hong Kong are not supported for NLU due to the, um, uh, the, the uh, uh, prediction server in that at data center. Um, and last but not least, um, Internet Explorer browser is not supported for, for the NOU model builder. And we have documentation on this as well on the ServiceNow doc site. Hey, Mike, quick question. And you may have already mentioned this, but I'm looking in my instance and I noticed that out of the out of the box, 
topics and intents or read only? Is that by design? Can I modify those? Um, th- that is by design. So, um, and a great question. Um, so just so the audience knows that those read only models are meant to be to maintain read only. So you could certainly consume those, that, that out of box HR model that's read only, but if you're looking to make modifications, it's recommended to make a copy of those out of box um, items because we're going to be introducing new intents, new um, you know topics for conversations. So not only do you want to keep the VA, the, the VA intents or that model read only, but also, you know, in New York going forward, um, you'll see that those um, conversations for VA are also read only. So the, the same applies there. You know, maintain the read only, copy them onto your use case if you need those to be modified. But um, great question, uh, Marcel. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that's a huge help. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't doing anything wrong. And just knowing that that's intended is, is really a, a huge relief. Absolutely. We give those for, um, for use, but again, if you're going to modify, certainly copy those to, um, you know, something, uh, uh, you know, custom. Um, so what do we want to mention now is, is the plugin. So there's some plugins that are specific for live agent, virtual agent and NLU, and you want to make sure that you, you know, enable those plugins so you could get those, uh, those capabilities, um, you know, within your environment. So for live agent, I'm not going to read them one by one, but these are the plugins that would be required for live agent. The next um, uh, column is the virtual agent. So you're going to need for HR specifically, you're going to need the, the HR scope app virtual agent conversations plugin, which is going to um, uh, engage the glide virtual agent plugin. That's part of the platform for NLU. We have the NLU model um, plugin. So it's a human resources scoped app NLU model that you're going to need for HR specifically. And it's going to leverage the agent intelligence and the NLU model builder um, plugins, um, you know, in order to facilitate that NLU model plugin. So um, be sure that um, if you're using VA, if you're using NLU, that you have these plugins uh, activated so you can consume what, uh, um, you know, what you're trying to do. Great. That's really helpful to know. And on to one of my favorite topics about sustainable model building and, and constant process improvement. So I would take a step back here before continuing to just fine tune your model and really look to your data and your analytics to drive that iterative model building. A lot of times you have the data already in your organization to share what are the most common types of cases? What are the high volume cases? Um, and on the IT side, what are the incidents that are most requested? Or are there areas where there are some quick wins out there to identify high volume, low complexity resolutions that can be solved through the chatbot? And so I think this is a great first place to look when you're thinking about tuning your model and continuing to build upon what you've already deployed. And as part of what, a, what Mike showed, being able to constantly tune your utterances. So as our recommendation, starting with 10 and moving forward from there. And utterances can include things like jargon. It can include different spellings. It can include different ways of saying something. An example could be if I am tuning a model on a pay request, it could be anything from adding utterances around pay stub, paycheck, direct deposit, money, cash, deductions, earnings. So all of those can be included in the utterances, intents and entities to make that model sharper and to pick up on common words that people use in the organization to help them resolve their pay issues. So getting into checking the model, you don't want to overfit your model. So making sure that you have a nice range in your confidence level for your model prediction is critical. So you don't need that to be 100%, but anywhere between 70 and, and 85 is generally pretty good. Um, you want it to be able to pick up and detect a person's utterance or a person's intent, what they're inputting into the chatbot. But you also don't want it to exclude the chatbot from recognizing other types of conversations that may better match what that person is trying to say to the chatbot. So being able to test 
and train the model are critical steps to that continuous model tuning. We recommend you repeat this until you've covered all potential utterances. And again, a great way to find that is in your data or even things like focus groups in your organization, having people that share, hey, this is how people are asking these questions or here's how we think that this information would be requested, including that from all channels. Your data, your employees are your two main sources of excellent data that you can continue to rinse and repeat and help sharpen and create a great experience as part of a really tuned model. So again, continuing to train um, as needed and make sure that, that the utterances are updated, you're adding more specific entities, you may even have synonyms for words that you wanna add into that. And then more so retaining those test cases to make sure that your, your chatbot is providing accurate responses. And so this is really about understanding Ultimately, did this provide the experience that employees were expecting? And more so, did it exceed their expectations? Is it something they're going to reuse over and over because they had a really positive experience? They felt the model supported them. They felt understood. Um, they felt like this was a really good alternative to speaking to somebody in person. And depending on the generation of the person, we have people from all different age groups and, and all different walks of life. Oftentimes, this is a preferred method for employees to interact with the organization. And so making sure that, that it's tuned and it's responsive um, is key to getting that type of adoption. And then, of course, retesting and continuing to just improve on that and making sure that if there's inputs about hey, it would be great to have a, a new um, intent around something that hasn't been deployed before, great. You know, these are great ways of capturing uh, organizational data to help support conversations that maybe previously weren't considered as something that needed to be built out, but there's a high demand for it. And so this iterative model building, again, this is a living, breathing investment and a great way to deliver excellent employee experiences and for administrators, really reduce the backlog of high volume uh, requests that typically come in around this. Hi, Marcel. Is, is the model tuning for NOU ever considered absolutely complete um, where I never have to touch it again? You know, I don't think that's true for anything in software. And especially with a chatbot, you're going to have to keep training it and tuning it and testing it. Um, I, some of the most successful organizations have made their chatbot an actual employee. So they gave it a name. They actually had a, a desk space for it. Um, it had a nomenclature that people would refer to it. So to really, you know, make it part of the organization and really impactful and gain widespread adoption from employees, you really need to look at this as a living, breathing investment that is going to continue continue delivering employee experience, um, you know, for employees to be able to, to get their needs addressed. Oh, that's great information. So some additional resources, and this is where you can dive into things like product documentation and really get into the details around what's delivered with NLU. Um, I would encourage you to go out to the community sites uh, we have a new virtual agent with natural language understanding community coming soon. And that's going to be a wealth of knowledge with blog posts and content and resources and how to guides. So it's going to be your, your go-to around everything with natural language understanding. And then just areas around how to debug your virtual agent. This is a pretty important topic because oftentimes you may set up new utterances in your model and for some reason, you're just not getting the testing results you want. So the debugging becomes of utmost importance to understand, well, where did I go wrong and where do those errors exist and how can I learn from that experience? So again, additional resources to help support your virtual agent with NLU journey. We wanna make sure you have everything at your fingertips. Um, so again, these are, these are just great guides and places to navigate to for more information. So I'll open it up for Q and A. Um, we are taking a look at the YouTube channel for questions and answers. Um, I do believe we have answered all of the questions on YouTube, but I think at this point we can uh, 
we can open it up for Q and A. We had the one that was um, also here on the Zoom um, that that does NLU require sub subscription. So I think you really have answered that. Yeah, that's a great question. So it is it is part of licensing. So depending on what you are licensed for. Um, it's, it's a great one to check with your account executive or your product line specialist to understand if you do have entitlements to virtual agent with natural language understanding. Um, so that's a great question. Let's just check to see if anyone else is typing because we have that delay while people are doing that. Again, if, um, if you all have any other questions, um, the, the uh, event link that was posted on the community, if you found it up for, for joining, or I've also posted it on the YouTube channel, the link for where this event lives, the YouTube playback is embedded, and you can always post questions, and, and uh, Marcel and Michael will be coming in to answer those questions today and into the future. So again, that's another valuable um, uh, asset that we have for these asset expert events on the community. You know, we, and we certainly encourage the questions ongoing, um, you know, having this as a community, we're, we're helping each other out. Um, so if you have a question, um, you probably have, uh, you know, constituents or colleagues or friends or family that have the same questions. So, you know, posting it on the community after this Ask the Expert event will also benefit, um, you know, all of us as well. So we certainly encourage that. Yeah, and I just wanted to thank everyone on the call today for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us and spend an hour talking about this great topic, virtual agent with natural language understanding. We're certainly really excited about it. I hope you are too, and uh, I hope today was valuable. Okay, with well, that, we'll just close it up at the end of the end of this session, and we hope that you all will um, come to our next ones, and you can always find them posted on the community. And we'll make sure that we also put the links um, you know, into the community link as well. So for the future ones. So thank you again, Marcel. And thank you, Michael. And uh, we'll see you all again soon. And we'll see you virtually on the community.